Welcome back. After filming the threading portion, I thought maybe I should put together a follow-up video so you can see the outcome of the final project. I don't know how interested anyone is in water swivels, but I needed a swivel for a uh, diamond core barrel I use for coring through concrete and asphalt to set monitoring wells. Uh, one of the reasons I got into this hobby was to be able to make my own tooling for my own, for my business, a uh, large part of which is uh, uh, drilling and soil sampling and setting monitoring wells for environmental sampling. So needed a water swivel. To, uh, my old one had uh, stripped the threads and I ended up having to get it welded up on a job in Wyoming so I could finish the job. But once the diamonds wore out, I didn't have any way to reuse that swivel, so I thought I'd make myself a nice one this time. It wasn't cobbled together in a real quick like the previous one I used, so this was my attempt. Uh, in the previous video where I showed the threading, I'm just kind of summarizing here and showing a few bits of it, but here we're just fitting up the core barrel to make sure the threads fit and uh, make sure that it'll thread on. I didn't I didn't have any specifications of any type for the thread that's used, so it was just kind of done by trying to get fitting it up. Here is the inside view. So after I got the threads done, I went ahead and finished machining the spindle, which included uh, cutting some grooves and for O-rings, cutting a boring for the water to go in and come out through the center of the core barrel and then here I'm showing machining the flats. The uh, drive head is a hydraulic motor that drives it and it's got a, a two inch square receiver that, that drives whatever whether I'm running augers or the core barrel. So I had to machine this uh, round into a square to fit up into the, into the hydraulic drive. So my previous videos show that building the mount to mount this vertical head onto this you know, Kearney and Trucker horizontal mill. But here we're fitting up the rotating the parts. We can machine the four flats at 90 degrees from each other just using an angle plate to make sure I've got the uh, part mounted upright. I used a small jack stand to support the hanging outer edge hanging out on the part. I don't know if it was necessary or not, but I thought it might help the jack stands. I, the one I have is was too big to fit under there, so I ended up using some half inch coupler nuts we could use on all thread to couple lengths of all thread together and then just a half inch bolt work real nice for small jack stands and they're if you've got some couplers laying around, it's an easy way to make a small jack stand.
I'm just using a, a two and an eighth inch shell mill to uh, mill the flats on the top of the swivel. There's a little better view of using the angle plate to get the part squared up. But there's enough slop in the fit here that it's not a, aren't super critical. As long as it's mostly at 90 degrees, it'll it'll fit in the the uh, hydraulic drive fine. It's basically just like re receiver tubing, like you'd have on the hitch on your truck, is what I believe the manufacturer. Looked to me, it looks like they welded a flange onto a piece of receiver tubing, and that's what bolts onto the hydraulic drive to to drive the unit. It was originally set up to run the drive augers, uh, run eight-inch OD hollow stem augers. Not as much as I used to anymore. We've got better ways to do it, but having the hydraulic heads handy for running this unit. Here I was trying to show my feeds and speeds, but uh, I realized that the sort of feed rate at three quarters an inch a minute, but the spindle speed doesn't really matter because I'm not using the horizontal spindle, I'm using the spindle on the vertical head, which is 100 RPM. And then I also had set up the uh, stops on the uh, X feed, and you can see that the uh, I don't know what you call it the dog tripping the tripping the feed and on the left end of the threaded portion I put a a uh, step block as a stop so that it would stop at the the spindle would sit in the vise at the same place each time but the shell gave a nice finish and took the material off in a hurry. So here's the finished spindle. You can see the o-ring grooves, the holes for the water to come in and the water comes out the center of the bore there to go down through the core barrel and flush the cuttings out. And so here I'm going to try and assemble the whole part. I've made that brass collar. It was just a boring job to bore it out to the right diameter and then drill and tap it for a I think it was a half inch NPT. Just the O rings seal the, keep the water going down through the center of the spindle to flush the cuttings out as the core barrel rotates. And uh, the brass sleeves held on with a snap ring, you know, fits in a groove on the spindle. And then if I can figure out how to get the uh, this bushing threaded on there and get that threaded in. Seems like it's harder than it ought to be, but if you go with it long enough, you can usually get it done. There, it wasn't so hard. There's the completed swivel. A um, little stiff, but that uh, enough torque in that hydraulic motor, it doesn't notice that. Now, just a test to make sure it all still fits together. 
now that the whole thing's done. The uh, material I made the spindle out of is a 17-5 stainless steel. I found it at the local scrap. Well, I don't know, it's a freight damage place, but they, they occasionally have stock metals. If a magnet sticks to it, it's 50 cents a pound, no matter what it is. But I found a couple chunks of this stuff out there. It's machines beautifully for stainless steel and has held up real well over use. So here's the final spindle. I went ahead and put a piece of stainless steel stainless steel pipe on with a stainless steel uh, ball valve to uh, to connect up the, where the hose threads in to feed the water and uh, hopefully that'll keep it from getting as rusty and nasty as my old chromoly steel one had done. So here's the swivel in action running behind the rig, which is mounted on a little New Holland Ford tractor. But uh, we're coring a 14 inch hole through, I believe this concrete ended up being about 8 inches thick. So we could set some monitoring wells at an old gas station with some leaky tanks. But uh, there's the raw materials we started with the stainless steel and the brass. And just a couple photos I grabbed during the process of getting the thing turned down. It's worked out great. Um, used it a few times. Heck a lot cheaper than buying one because nobody makes one that does exactly what I want it to do, which is why I got into this machining hobby in the first place. But thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.